field. <laughs> This is a video that solves the central mystery of quantum mechanics by proving that there are zero energy waves. Elementary waves invisible are and travel in all directions do they? But zero energy carry they. The waves like trajectories are paths in the woods like. The energy is inside the particles. Made of particles are we, not luminous matter. Particles, not waves, all energy and momentum contain. This ocean of elementary waves in immersed in we are different than the force used to believe in. I. You want the impossible. My name is Jeff with two F's like the two feathers on a Boyd, better known as Yoda, am I? The idea of zero energy waves strikes physicists as preposterous because physicists incorrectly believe that they believe that all waves must carry energy, that energy is what defines a wave. Now what does this convoluted sentence mean? Incorrectly believe that they believe. Well, as a psychiatrist, I'm constantly dealing with people who have two different ways of thinking that contradict each other and they don't even recognize the contradiction internal to their own mind. I mean, for example, Thomas Jefferson believed that all men are created equal. And he also believed that slaves and women are not equal to white men. That we are the same person, believing have I a hard time. If you a psychiatrist are, and I a Jedi am. The scientists will tell you that all waves carry energy. That's the very essence of every wave. And yet, simultaneously, that the wave equations of quantum mechanics convey probability amplitudes and not energy. Take, for example, the Schrodinger equation. It's a wave equation. Even though at the center of the Schrodinger equation you have a Hamiltonian operator, H, which is an energy operator, nevertheless the equation itself is not conveying energy. It's conveying probability amplitudes. Well, that which quantum mechanics calls a wave, we also call a wave. Wave equations are the same if time goes forward or time goes backward. But that's not what happens in nature. In nature, time only goes forwards, but the waves go backwards in space. Meaning that the waves go forward in time, but in the opposite direction as the particle that is following them. Our wave particle is very similar to that of quantum mechanics, except the wave goes in this direction and the particle in this direction. The remainder of this video is devoted to proving empirically that these waves carry zero energy. In the second video of this series, TEW2, we discussed what Richard Feynman called the central mystery of quantum mechanics having to do with the double slit experiment, but we only discussed the first half of that central mystery. We're now going to cover both halves of the central mystery, including a review of some of the information I presented in TEW2. To introduce this topic, we will use a clip from Jim Al-Khalili, who's always very entertaining. I'm going to explain to you what's known as the central mystery of quantum mechanics. It was Richard Feynman, the American physicist, said, this is the central mystery of quantum mechanics. There's lots of weird stuff that goes on in the quantum world. Hit you with this, and it basically tells you what it's all about. It's called the two-slit experiment. The first mystery of quantum mechanics comes when we open the second slit. Because now we see something that's very much like the interference pattern we got with light. Rather than having two bands 
of, of, of uh, spots where the atoms have gone through the two slits, it's as though the atoms have gone through the slits behaving like waves. And, 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 and you get interference of the waves and you get these bands. What if we were to spy on the atom and see where it goes? We can just gently just observe which slit it goes through. So you put a detector just above the upper slit that will flash or beep whenever it sees an atom go through that top slit. Sure enough, you fire the atoms through one at a time. 50% of the time, the detector will beep. The other 50% of the time, it doesn't. The assumption being that the atom has gone through the lower slit. But of course, I've been cheeky here. I haven't shown you the results of the experiment. That's what you get. 50% of the time, it beeps, and you see a spot arrive adjacent to the upper slit. The other half of the time, it doesn't beep, but you see a spot arrive at the lower slit. So, yeah, it's picked out the atoms that have gone through the upper slit and not the ones that have gone through. So each atom does go through one slit or the other. But that's a different result to what we had earlier. So here's the last bit of sneakiness that we can play with atoms. Surely now, you know, we're, we're going to get to grips with it. Leave the detector there, but just very quietly go and unplug it. <laughs> Don't let the atoms know that you're not spying on them. Make them think that you're still detecting them. So, yeah, 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 okay, we're going to run the experiment. Atoms, okay, get ready, one at a time. We're going to be checking on you. All right, so run the experiment again. Now, if you can explain this using common sense and logic, <laughs> do let me know, because there's a Nobel Prize for you. Explain this using common sense and logic, T-E-W, can do. Like all the other quantum experts, Al Khalili assumes that the waves and the particles go in this direction, which obviously is false because it leads to such incredible contradictions it can't possibly be true. Why not try it out with the waves going in this direction? Consider waves coming from the red dot at the bottom right of the target screen radiating up and as you can see they form constructive interference as they impinge on the particle source emitting atoms. The pink circle around the particle source is meant to draw your eye to that area where interference occurs and is very important. There is no interference occurring over here. Although all points of the target screen radiate elementary rays, for simplicity we're considering only one point at a time and we'll consider what happens as that point moves up the target screen and the interference over here changes from constructive to destructive, which is to say the peak of one wave fills in the valley of the other wave and you get flat water and therefore no likelihood of an atom being fired. If we then consider a point of origin halfway up the target screen, uh, again we get constructive interference. Now the likelihood of an atom being fired is proportional to the amplitude of the impinging wave and if an atom is fired there's no further interference and the atom will follow its wave only and there's a hundred percent probability that the atom will make a dot on the target screen at that point from which its particular elementary wave originated. All of this you learned in TEW2 but now we turn to the question of these waves having zero energy. The key to understanding this is that Al-Khalili speaks of gently watching which slit is used, which means that he's using a detector of very low energy. And furthermore, that detector acts different and the particles act different if he unplugs it. So here is what the evidence tells us. The interference, of course, is located over here in proximity to the particle source. We know that there is a detector up here that is in proximity to the upper slit and we know that if there's a tiny amount of energy in this detector it destroys the interference whereas if there's no energy in it the interference continues. We know that the interference over here depends on there being waves coming through both slits 
you can't have wave interference if waves are coming only from one slit and not the other slit. So what that clearly suggests is that the slightest amount of energy applied here to this detector is enough to obstruct the upper slit so that no waves can get through that upper slit. Since this is such a tiny amount of energy, consistent with the idea that we're only gently observing that upper slit, that means that it must be zero energy waves that are being obstructed. So let's look at our model. These waves radiating out in blue are zero energy waves. Now, if we introduce into our double slit experiment exactly the detector that al Khalili used, and then when we turn it on, it radiates these small red waves which have a small amount of energy, perhaps a tiny, tiny amount of energy, consistent with the idea that we are gently observing the upper slit. Now, because there's a little bit of energy in those red waves, they take priority over the blue zero energy waves and get in the way, obstructing the blue waves so they cannot get through the upper slit. Since the blue waves coming through the lower slit are not matched by blue waves coming through the upper slit, therefore there is no interference in proximity to the particle source. Consequently, when the atoms are fired and they find their way to the target screen, they are going to reveal a pattern that shows there is no interference because this screen tells us what's going on over here. Now, if we go back and unplug the detector, what we find is that it no longer radiates red waves with energy, and therefore the blue zero energy waves can get through both slits so that there is constructive or destructive interference in proximity to the particle source, so that, of course, the target screen will show an interference pattern. Because the target screen accurately reflects what's going on over here. Here again is El Khalili. Now, if you can explain this using common sense and logic, <laughs> do let me know, because there's a Nobel Prize for you. Explain this using common sense and logic, we have done. The key to understanding this is what I said in the third video, TEW3, that these elementary rays are the physical analog of a probability amplitude. Now, nobody would really think that a probability amplitude has an influence over a particle by conveying energy. It has an influence over the particle because it is a probability amplitude, and that is precisely the explanation for why zero energy elementary waves, i.e., zero energy probability amplitudes have such an impact. When died at age 70, Richard Feynman did not see the solution to the central mystery of quantum mechanics. I, Yoda, have reached the age of 900 years, and I have seen it. <laughs>